even before I knew that I had to, to give a message this evening, the Lord spoke to me. And it's wonderful when the Lord speaks to you. Uh, um, in my case, I just have to keep quiet. You know, I'm so used to speaking all the time. If I just keep quiet, God wants to speak to me. And sometimes we just have to find that place of quietness before God and allow Him to speak to us. He's a gentleman. He doesn't shout, all right? He speaks. We just need to quiet all the other voices. All right, the, tonight's message is entitled, Your Mandate Generates Power. We're talking about power. We said that same power that God resurrected in Christ, that same power is in us, lives in us, is available to us. Do you believe that? You better. All right. We need to believe that, especially in times like this. We need to believe that. And I'm going to speak, I'm just going to, um, 1 Kings uh, chapter 19. All right, from verse 1 to 19. I'm going to read that to us. I've printed it out. Okay. And Ahab told Jezebel all that Elijah had done. Also how he had executed all the prophets with the sword. Then Jezebel sent a messenger to Elijah saying, so let the gods do to me and more also, if I do not make your life as the life of one of them by tomorrow about this time. And when he saw that, he arose and ran for his life and went to Beersheba, which belongs to Judah, and left his servant there. But he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness. All right, I always say that if, if somebody is led into the wilderness, you know something is about to happen. And came and sat down under a broom tree, and he prayed that he might die. Okay, that was a bit depressing. And said, it's enough. Now, Lord, take my life, for I am no better than my father's. Then as he lay and slept under a broom tree, who of you goes to sleep when you feel a bit down? Okay, nobody. All right, just me. Okay. Um, as he lay and slept under a broom tree, suddenly an angel touched him and said, Arise and eat. Then he looked, and by his head was a cake of bread on coals and a jar of water. So he ate and drank and lay down again. Now that I want to do if I ate on a Sunday. You know? Then I want to lay down again. And the angel of the Lord came back the second time and touched him and said, Arise and eat. Because your journey is too great for you. So he arose and he ate and drank. And he went in the strength of that food. This you must underline. Make a note. He went in the strength of that food 40 days and 40 nights. As far as were up the mountain of God. I wish I could eat a piece of bread that will go, make me go 40 days. A piece of bread makes me go 40 seconds. And then I can already see that I've picked up weight. All right. So this is powerful stuff. This is powerful food that the Lord organized for this man of God. And he went into the cave when he was at that mountain. He went into the cave and spent the night in that place. And behold, the word of the Lord came to him and said to him, What are you doing here, Elijah? So he said, I've been very zealous for the Lord. Now this is, this is his emotional state. All right? He's communicating to God, which is good. He's telling the Lord as if the Lord doesn't know it already. But he's communicating and he's saying, I've been very zealous for the Lord of hosts. For the children of Israel have forsaken your government, tore down your altars and kill your prophets with the sword. I am alone. I am a, alone am left and they seek to take my life. All right. He's complaining. He's, com he, he's communicating emotions. He's not at a good place. This doesn't look like he's at a good place. First he wants to die, then he takes a trip, and now he wants to, seems to me, he wants to, still wants to die. All right? All right. Then the next piece from verse 11, it says, God's revelation to Elijah. Then he said, go out and stand in the mountain before the Lord. And behold, the Lord passed by, and a great and strong wind tore into the mountains and broke the rocks in pieces before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. And after the wind and the earth, um, and after the wind, an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake, a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire was a still, 
small voice. So it was when Elijah heard it that he wrapped his face in his mantle and went out and stood in the entrance of the cave. Then suddenly a voice came to him and said, What are you doing here, Elijah? And he repeated his story. I've been very zealous for the Lord of hosts because the children of Israel have forsaken your government, torn down the altars and killed your prophets with the sword. I alone am left and they seek to take my life. The next verse is very important because usually when I complain to someone, when I spill my guts, when I lay my emotions on the table, I want some comforting words. I want to know it's going to be okay. You're not that bad. Don't worry. Things are going to be okay. Tomorrow will be a bit better. You know, it happens to a lot of people. Don't worry. You're not the first to experience this. But look at verse 15. Then the Lord said to him, Go, return on your way to the wilderness. That's very encouraging. Um, Of Damascus, and when you arrive, anoint Azal? Az. Azael. Azael. Anyway, that dude. Okay, as king over Syria. Also, you shall anoint Jehu, the son of Nimshi, as king over Israel. And Elisha, the son of Shaphat, um, of Abel. I was on a roll, and then these names just come up here and break everything. Okay, you shall anoint as the prophet in your place. It shall be that whoever escapes the sword of Azael, Jehu will kill. And whoever escapes the sword of Jehu, Elisha will kill. And I have reserved 7,000 in Israel, all whose knees have not bowed to Baal and every mouth that has not kissed him. So he departed from there and found Elisha, the son of Shaphat, who was plowing with 12 yoke of oxen before him. And he was with the 12. Then Elijah passed by him and threw his mantle on him. All right. Now I said this morning I've repented because sometimes I go to the pastor and I tell him, first congregation member, you know, and my wife and my children, everything is just too much for me. And then he tells me, go do this, go do that, go do that. And I'm like, that's not what I want to hear. I want some encouragement. You know, I want some, you know, Come sit here. Come have a spur breakfast with me. You know, everything's going to be okay. But that has happened before, okay? But um, we tend to want some sympathy for our situation. But here God is giving perspective. And He's giving a fresh mandate to the man of God, which gives him strength. As soon as he adheres to the mandate, he starts walking in obedience and he's anointing the people and he's going and he's, 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 he's on his way again. This was a revelation for me, but sympathy doesn't give me power. A mandate gives me the power. Understanding doesn't give me the power to overcome, but a mandate Gives me that power. So what did Pastor Cornelius do for me? He gave me a fresh mandate. Every time I come to him and I feel like Elijah, I've preached on a Sunday and like this Sunday and I've preached my heart out and on Monday morning, you know, things are a bit rough for me. Gives me a fresh mandate so that I can have the power to prevail, the power to go forth, the power to, to, to walk in that what God has called and destined me to do. But it's not always nice. You know, and yeah, Elijah thought he had his facts in line when he said he's the only one left. And God said, no, no, let me give you some perspective. There are still 7,000 left. Okay, you're not the only one. All right. Does that mean God didn't like Elijah or didn't feel compassion for um, Elijah? No. All right. It was just not maybe what he expected to hear. But in the power of God, with a new mandate, he rose up and he finished the task. And you know what? He was so special that God collected him via express. The fire express. It stopped there. 
He picked him up and he took him straight to heaven. That's how special he was. He might not have felt that special when the Lord said to him, listen, I hear what you're saying, but um, I've got, still got the mandate for you to do. All right. So, um, in 1 Kings chapter 18, Elijah had this great sermon or this great breakthrough where he addressed the whole of Israel and he said to them, today you have to choose. All right. This awesome sermon and the Lord came down with fire and burned up the offering and everything was awesome. And then he said, now we're going to destroy the roots. Okay, bring me those prophets of Baal. And they killed all the Baal prophets. It was an amazing service. It was to die for. All right. But just the next chapter, Jezebel comes with intimidation. She says, I'm going to kill you. And he runs into the wilderness and he says, I'm finished. It's enough. All right. Who of you have seen a boxing match before? Do you know that they have these little towels and then they use it to wipe the sweat and all the other stuff? All right. But if, if they want to quit, they take their towel or the, the, the trainer. He always stands like this with the towel on. And if he wants to quit, if he sees boxers being defeated, now if that guy wants to quit, he takes the towel like this. Bah! And he throws it in the ring. He says, finished. All right. And that's how Elijah felt. He said, I'm finished. I want to throw in the towel. I want to say, I quit. I've had enough. All right. I've had enough. But then something happened. Something happened. He had a very peaceful sleep. But then the Lord woke him up. The angel of the Lord woke him up. And he, what did he say to him? He said, my favorite word, eat. Yes. All right. He said, eat. Okay. And sometimes we think that to eat, you know, it's just the stuff that you can see, the stuff that you can taste. But there's more to food than what meets the eye. There's a type of food that is not physical, but spiritual. And we need that more than the physical bread. We need spiritual food. All right? Just write this down. Matthew 4 verse 4. And Jesus was there in the wilderness. That's why I say lots of stuff happened in the wilderness. All right? He was in the wilderness and he was tired and hungry. And the enemy came and he wanted to, you know, challenge him, challenge his authority. And that's where Jesus answered. He answered and said, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. So I want to challenge you this evening and say, if you're ever at a place, or maybe you are at that place where you want to throw in the towel, what are you eating? I want to take a look at your diet. All right, there are a lot of nice things to eat. When I walk across the road there to the store, won't mention names, there uh, across my house, when I walk in, they don't have the beans and the Brussels sprouts, they have the crunchies and the bar ones and the Lay's chippies. All right? And sometimes we want to just grab hold of the nice things. The promises, all right? The powerful sermons. We, if we get a powerful sermon from this place, we take it. A powerful sermon from that place, we take it. We just want to walk into the store and eat all the nice stuff. But we don't want the food that necessarily is the food that we need to sustain us. What is your diet? What are you listening to in this time? What are you gathering around the opinions of people, the emotions of people, your own emotions, the facts surrounding you, this COVID. All right? You have heard that many a times before. Yes, we didn't send them to school because of this COVID. I've lost my job because of this COVID. All right? It's out there. It's a reality. 
But are we feeding on that or are we feeding on the things that God provides? Another scripture, John 4, verse 31 to 34. Jesus was sitting at the well. He was tired. He was hungry, probably, because his disciples went into town to go and buy food. All right, and when they returned, they realized that Jesus was ministering and he still hadn't eaten anything. So they said, um, in the meantime, the disciples urged him, saying, Rabbi, eat. But he said to them, I have food to eat of which you do not know. And that was not a snacker bar, all right, that he hid from his disciples and that he ate. Therefore, his disciples said to one another, has anyone brought him anything to eat? And then Jesus said, and this you must write down, Jesus said, my food is to do the will of him who sent me and to finish his work. You see, there's a certain provision, there's a certain spiritual sustenance that we have to learn to tap into in our times of need, in our times of trouble, in our times when we feel that we want to throw in the towel. There's spiritual food for us to eat. But there's also a lot of junk out there, if I can say it like that. You know, a lot of false teaching that just say what your itching ears or the other people's itching ears wants to hear. They don't want the discipline. They don't want to eat the Brussels sprouts and the broccoli and the, the beans. They just want to eat the treats, the flour and the, the um, ice cream and the tin roof ice cream. Okay, anyway. So they just want to do the nice things, but they don't want to eat the word. What does your diet look like this evening? Do you need to change your diet? I learned in this week that I had to change my diet drastically. I'm not just talking about the physical diet. I'm talking about my spiritual diet. You know, there's, 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 there's programs on TV that you like to watch. Okay, maybe not you, you're very holy, but I would like to watch some, some TV programs. Okay, about how they restore cars. And I like that stuff and like investigations. Okay, serious. I like to watch it. Okay, and then sometimes you know there's a, there's a, there's, I won't mention any names of any things, but then there's a guy liking a girl and you wish that they get together, but always something happens that they don't get together and when they get together, it's so nice for you, but then they're actually not married. Okay. And you're like, yay, they got, finally got together. Oh, wait. They're not married. Okay. Yeah, what a letdown. Okay. So, the Lord spoke to me about my diet. He challenged me. And this, I was so excited to watch this series. And all of a sudden, it just, something just happened to me. I don't want to watch it anymore. Why? I'm not going to tell you the name of the series. I'm going to, not going to tell you, you know, that is from the devil. You should not watch that. I'm going to trust the Lord that you will get that revelation of eating what God is giving you. Then they will, you will not be hungry for any other junk. You will learn to say no. I can't tell you you must say no. Because when you walk in that store and that crunchies are there, you're going to go for it. But when you know that crunchy is not, okay, not crunchy. Okay, anyway, any, any chocolate. Okay, any junk food. When you know it's not good for you, when you have a craving for God's word, those things will grow strangely dim. All of a the sudden, there will not be a need to put the kids in bed early because I want to watch my series. And they're not allowed to watch because it's grown-up stuff. Oh, my goodness. It's so bad. Then my boys, they bath, they run, they come to, they come to the TV and I just do that. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Daddy is busy watching. You can't watch this. Daddy, but why can't we watch this? Because daddy is not even supposed to watch it. That's why. So
So I want to challenge you this evening to say, take a look at your spiritual diet. What are you eating? Alright? What and where do you eat? The right food will bring you to the right place. You must have discipline on your food and take away the junk. I'm firstly speaking to myself because I realized how addictive junk can be. Jesus said, my, my food is to do the will of my Father. There's so much fulfillment in, in doing the things of God. But the enemy wants to come tell us, no, that's boring. You know, you've been just sitting here. When, when, if, you know, when, when last did you do something awesome? You are sitting here, if you're a student at Creori, or if you're a student, you are sitting here and you are feeding yourself. All right? For the mandate. You are feeding yourself. The right food will bring you to the right place. All right? And when you receive your mandate, you will not grow weary or tired because you've eaten the right food. Your diet is right. Is it easy to go on a diet? Ask me. No. It's not. Okay. Some weeks back I was on a golf diet. I only lived on greens. No, I'm joking. <laughs> All right? It's not easy to go on a diet. It's not easy. All right? The second thing, the second thing is that you must get your purpose, your mandate from God. Let's read 1 Kings 19, 15, verse 15 to 18. I've got it here somewhere. I've printed it out. But now my thumb is a bit tickle. I can't find it. It was here somewhere. Okay, but anyway. It's where God speaks to Eli and gives him the things that he still needs to go do. He must anoint this one. He must anoint that one. He must, he must get Elisha. All right? I just want to... I did some research. No, not research. I just read the chapter. All right? But the Lord said to Elijah... If, 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 if I'm, you must anoint these three, and the, the, if that one doesn't kill all the enemies, the next one will kill, the next one will kill. Let me just, just, let me just get that. I, I, I need to get that quickly. All right? He, 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 he said what was going to happen. He gave the mandate, but he also then said what is going to happen, and it happened exactly like that. Verse 15, it says, the Lord said to him, go return on your way to the wilderness of Damascus. And when you arrive, anoint Azael as king over Syria. Also, you shall anoint Jehu, the son of Nimshi, as king over Israel. And Elijah, the son of Saphat, of Abel, time we look at him, um, you shall anoint as prophet in your place. It shall be that whoever escapes the sword of Azael, Jehu will kill, and whoever escapes the sword of Jehu, Elisha will kill. You know what happened to this woman, Jezebel? All right? Jehu, the guy that was anointed by Elijah, that king, Jehu. He went there to, to the palace of, uh, um, of Ahab's palace. He went there, and there was Jezebel. She was like, Nicely uh, makeup and everything, you know, standing there, you know. And he looked up and he said, who is with me? And there was three men uh, that was standing next to Jezebel. And they like, we are with you. And he said, throw her. Throw her off there. And they pushed her over the balcony and she fell to the ground with her nice makeup and everything. Nobody worried about what is happening to her. While she fell off and lied there, King Jehu went in. They had a feast. They like partied. And then all of a sudden, when the party was finished, she said, Oh, I wonder what happened to Jezebel. 
let us, let us just go quickly, go and look. And they looked for, they couldn't find her. They only found her head and her feet. The dogs also had a feast. While they were having the fe- feast inside. Okay? This mighty lady, all right, the one that intimidated the man of God, look at her end. Why? Because he finished his mandate. He anointed that man. If he didn't anoint that man, who knows what would have happened. But because he was obedient to the mandate that God gave him, it happened. What an unworthy way to die. Being pushed off by your own people over the balcony and and then being eaten up by dogs. But he was obedient to the mandate. So, point number one was what? Can you still remember? Can you still remember what point number one was? Oh, my word. Uh, Somebody there? Yeah, your food, your diet. All right? Point number two. Get your purpose, your mandate from God. All right, I want to read to to you uh, Luke 5, uh, verse 5 to 6. But Simon answered and said to him, Master, we have toiled all night and caught nothing. Nevertheless, at your word, I will let down the net. And when they had done this, they caught a great number of fish. And their nets was breaking. Jesus was giving him the mandate. Okay? They were complaining. He said, what's happening, guys? He said, no, we've tried the whole night. We've toiled the whole night. We didn't catch anything. Don't worry. You know, there are lots of fish in the sea. Okay? You You will have a better fish day tomorrow. Come home, take a discipline, you know, relax. No. He's given them a mandate. They are still busy with speaking about failure and he's giving them a mandate. He said, go out again, do it again. On that word, on that mandate, when they reacted, he said, nevertheless, at your word, I will let, it, I will let down the net. And when they had done this, they caught a great number of fish and the nets was breaking. Matthew 8, verse 8 and 13. The centurion answered and said, Lord, I am not worthy that you should come under my roof, but only speak a word and my servant will be healed. Verse 13. Then Jesus said to the centurion, go your way. And as you have believed, so it be done for you. And his servant was healed that same hour. You see, that centurion understand, understood something. He understood something about mandate. He just said to, he actually said to Jesus, just give me the mandate. Just give me the mandate because I know there's power in the mandate and the mandate will be fulfilled. That's actually what he said. So Jesus said, here's the mandate. Go back. Your servant will be healed. The man turned around and he walked. Has God given you a mandate? Once before that you've, you didn't recognize as a mandate, you saw it as discipline maybe, or you saw it as, oh, you know, now I have to do another thing. Okay, maybe that just happened to me. The challenge here is, do you know God's mandate for you in this season of your life? You see, the thing is, everybody, it doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter how strong you are spiritually. You can pray fire from heaven. That doesn't make you exempt from coming to a place where you feel, I want to throw in the towel. I've had enough. Nothing exempts you for that. But... 
pity and passion and whatever will not be powerful enough to get you out of that. Only the mandate from God. And if you are sitting here tonight, if you're a student here or a student at the varsity or if you're working, God has given you a specific purpose and a mandate. You better find out what that is if you don't know. You better find that out. Because otherwise, this journey is going to be too long for you. I'm telling you straight. I don't dookies on me. I don't turn around clocks. Okay? Otherwise, this, this corona, okay, it's going to be too, too rough for you. You need to know what God is saying in this time. There, your power lies in that. What is God saying? What is the mandate? I will finish the mandate. Because that's a godly mandate. And if I don't finish it, I have to raise up somebody that will finish it. I have to anoint somebody that will finish it. Because this is the mandate. Pastor Cornelius' first spiritual dad, um, Umduim from Malta, had a a mandate and a dream of something happening in the north. Did he see that mandate? No. Pastor Cornelius walked into that mandate. We are the ones that will continue with that mandate and our children are the ones that will maybe one day finish that mandate. So what is your mandate? Why are you here? Why are you studying? Why are you at church tonight? What is your mandate? You need to have a mandate. When you go to your leaders and you want sympathy, you didn't finish your word on time, you know, did you have community service or fun hours or whatever. When you go to your leader, and I know, I went to my leaders lots of times while I was a student. Okay? I want to hear, oh, it's okay. You know, we'll try it next, next week. That's what I want to hear. I don't want to hear, hey, why don't you finish it? Okay, now you have got two exams. I don't want to hear that. I want them to feel sorry for me. And I'm struggling with the word. You know? It doesn't always happen like that. All right? You're here because you've got a mandate, and, the, and your leader will give you your mandate. They will give you your mandate. They will say, listen, this has to be finished. This. And you, when they give the mandate, the power is there to fulfill the mandate. Let's hold on to that. Let's not look at the circumstances, but I only have a week and I'm struggling to study and, and I had to do this and I had to do uh, evangelism and, you know, I had to go get trees from the nursery and plant them on the farm and you know, I didn't have... They give you the mandate. You must do it. I want to read to you what Google says about mandate. An official order or commission to do something. The authority to carry out a policy regarded as giving by the electorate to a party or candidate that wins an election. Okay. Give someone authority to act in a certain way. You are given the authority to act in a certain way. Huh? Not by... You are given the authority by God to act in a certain way. You've given a, you are given a godly mandate. I'm going to close. And I just want to say that about a year ago, I came to a place where I just want to throw in the towel. I wanted to throw in the towel. I was feeling sorry for myself. I was asking a lot of questions. I was doubting. I was feeling angry. Ugh, a lot of emotional things. I made Elijah look like a Sunday school teacher. With my complaint to the Lord. 
to know why. And I had a whole big thing. And I just realized, you know, God has got a mandate for my life. And the enemy, the enemy that's under my feet and under your feet, his only purpose is to come to steal, kill, and destroy. That's what he wants to come and do. And sometimes he succeeds because, you know, if, if a thief comes into your house, do you expect a thief? No. Well, you are sleeping sound and, you know, you wake up and your car has gone. All right? So that's his, he wants to come and he wants to surprise you and, and steal something from you and discourage you and, and steal your mandate. And, and that's what the enemy wants to do. And this is serious stuff. All right? And the enemy came into my life and he wanted to steal from me. And I almost fell for it. Almost. But then I realized, God has given me a mandate. And I must run with the mandate that God gives me. He will give me the strength to finish my mandate. It doesn't matter what the enemy tried. What that what the enemy meant for evil. God will turn in that for my good as well. But guys, it was hard. I'm not going to tell you it's easy. Sometimes things happen in your life. It's difficult. It's hard. Sometimes you feel like, you know, Pastor, you don't know what you're preaching. You don't know what I'm going through at this stage. You're right. I don't. I don't. But I know how it feels if the enemy comes in and wants to steal from you. And almost succeeds. You know. I caught him in the driveway. Okay. <laughs> he, was, he was busy. Trying to steal my whole life. He packed everything into my, the car of my life. And he was on his way out. But I got him right there. I took back what he stole from me. <laughs> but um, I want to encourage you this evening. And I want to pray for you might not look like it, but I'm very excited about that what God wants to come and do in this time, in this season in your life. I believe that you were here and I believe God spoke to me for a time such as this that you will know what to do. Sleep if you have to sleep. Okay? But eat. Okay? Eat the word of God. Eat it because when you eat it, will come to the right place to receive the mandate. Now some of you that are sitting here already has a mandate. But you've kind of forgotten about it. Okay? Some of you don't have a freaking clue what your mandate is maybe. Alright? But God has got a mandate for each and every one. That's why we pray for in the beginning before the birthdays. That's why we pray. God has got a mandate. He's got a mandate for each and every person. While you were in your mother's stomach. Okay? He had a dream about you. He had a mandate for you. He was excited about you. And he said, oh, that's the dream of hearts. My goodness, I've got a mandate. That man or that woman is going to do that. Great and mighty exploits. So excited. And now you've turned up and you've, you are a bit overweight like some people. Okay. <laughs> and you might not be that excited about yourself this evening, but God remains the same. He's still as excited about you like the moment that you took your first breath. He's still excited about you because he knows that he placed the mandate inside of you to finish. To finish strong. You are more than a conqueror through Christ that gives you the strength. That same power is living inside of us. He's excited about you this evening. He believes in you this evening. Take it. 
take the mandate, run with the mandate. Say, Lord, what do you want me to do? I'm here. And listen. Okay, take that stuff out of your ears. Right, it's so, this morning, if I have the mask on, I can't see. And if I can't see, I can't have the mask on. It's so frustrating. But this morning I was sitting here and a guy came in and he spoke to pastor. I thought, who on earth is that guy? I haven't seen him before. And I put my glasses on. I said, oh, that's the guy in my cell. <laughs> I trust that the Lord will open your eyes to see clearly the mandate that you have. Amen. Change your diet. Change your diet. Let's just close our eyes. Father God, thank you that we can come to you in this evening, Lord. And I want to pray for each and every person sitting here this evening. Father God, you had an appointment with them here this evening, Lord. I pray, Father, that they will be invigorated, that they will have so much energy because of the mandate that you've placed inside each one of them. Father, I pray that when they... they Heads eat the pillows tonight, Lord, that you will speak to them in dreams and visions. You will remind them of the mandate that they have. You will remind them of your love and the power that is inside of them, Father God. You will give them the things to do, that they will not act out of their own, Father, so that they can boast in the things, but that they will only react to your word, so that you will receive the honor and you will receive the glory. I pray for each and every one that is at the place where they want to throw in the towel or where they have already thrown in the towel and they're lying under the bushes this evening. Father, I pray that they will wake up and that they will eat, Father. That they will wake up and eat, that the journey will not be too long for them because they will eat your word, Father. I pray for a hunger for your word, Father. I pray that you will change their diets, including my own, Father, that the things of the world will grow strangely dim. Father God, that we will that we will surround ourselves with good, nourishing food from the good, nourishing source of your word. Not second-hand information that we find on other places, Father. Not just the, uh, the quick, quick little fixes that we find uh, in other places, Father, but that we will eat your word and that we will get the power to finish the mandate. I pray that we will come to a place where we hear the mandate, where we hear your word, that we will react to the mandate. Father, some of us that has already received the, the mandate, that we, we, we have it, but we, we haven't reacted on it, out of fear, or out of intimidation, I pray this, this evening that you will remove every obstacle, Father. Every obstacle hindering us from finishing the mandate. Every obstacle that's hindering and holding us back. In the name of Jesus, I pray that it will be that will be removed, Father, that we will be able to finish that, what we've started. Father, thank you that we can learn from you and your word, that you say that you that have started the good work will finish it. And Father, I pray that when we look at ourselves in the mirror, that we will not see, oh, this body, and oh, this, but that we will see, I've got the power inside of me, I've got the mandate inside of me, God is happy, God loves me, God is excited about my life, and that we will run in the strength of that. Thank you for your provision, Father God. Thank you that I can just also pray for everybody here tonight that, that say, Lord, I want to fulfill the mandate that you've given me. And Father, I want to pray for everybody that, that, that might feel, I've thrown in the towel. I, I hear this mandate thing, but I just, I don't have the strength. I want to pray, Father, for strength. I want to pray for strength to be generated in them, stirred up by faith. I want to pray for change, Father God. And I pray this evening that nobody will walk out of here the same. I pray, Father God, that you, that you will stir their spirit. I pray, Father, that they will quiet all the other voices, that they will listen to a small, still voice. That they will receive the mandate. That they will also, Father, that they will also encourage one another. That they will encourage one another. And say, I see the mandate that God has for your life. Go with that mandate. Father, forgive us in the past where we have thrown pity parties, where we have mentioned to you all the circumstances and all the reasons why, all the reasons why we can't fulfill the mandate, all the reasons standing in the way of fulfilling the mandate, all those things, Father. Please forgive me. 
and everyone that says amen to forgiving them. Help us, Lord, because we can't do this alone. We honor you and we thank you. We are excited about you. And um, yes, Lord, thank you for, for this week lying ahead that we can find out and yeah, know what you are saying. And we are looking forward to this week. We know that we're going to receive the strength. We know that we will, will, will be able to finish that what you have started, Father, that we will have the power to finish it. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.